welcome everyone to another episode of Around the Edge. I'm Tom Aulis, broker owner here with Edge Home Finance, Chief Growth Officer. Get to sit with my longtime pal, Justin Seelock, also located here in Minnesota. Uh, Justin, welcome to the show, brother. Thank you for having me, Tom. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's going to be, uh, we get to take a little delve back into not only our uh, history together, but you know, sure. I like to hear a little bit for, you know, we do this for a couple of reasons. One, it's hard as you grow a national company to have camaraderie and really understand who are the players, who are the team members that are part of Edge. This has been a great way to, you know, let some of our team members know who you are. So, sure. um, let's start with the origin story, brother. Tell me, uh, where you grew up and how you got into mortgages. So that's actually a funny story about how I got into mortgages. So I grew up in Champlain, Minnesota. Okay. So I've been here in Minnesota for my whole life. I did move to California for a brief stint to do some mortgage uh, work out there. But got into the mortgage industry back in 2001, 2002. So kind of around the same time Safe. as most guys in the yep. industry right now. Um, and I lived in a uh, four bedroom house down in uptown with a bunch of guys and they were all training with alpine mortgage at the time so that was like a two-week training course where they would grind eight hours a day they'd come home they'd have big books and i would just listen to them go through their lingo and uh finally after the two weeks is like you know i was catching on to things i'm like i can do this yeah so i just uh didn't apply with alpine though went to mortgage one in finance who was alpine Alpine was. Uh, I remember it was that's Del. Was that Delich's? Uh, no, that was Vance. Vance Casey. Okay, Some, but uh, they ended up moving it. They started it here and then moved out to Arizona. But okay, um, started at Mortgage One in Finance and just uh, never forget the first loan I closed was just dialing out of a phone book. Yeah. So what was the guy's um, name? You remember his name? No, or I don't Dallas remember his name? name, but I remember oh. the rate that uh, I sold him was. 7.625, so not too different from where we're at today. No, not at all. It's about spot on where <laughs> yeah. we're at today. So, um, but, and then from there, I went on to start a closing company, a notary company, did that for about a year and a half. And then after that, I went to Ace Mortgage, and that's yes. where we cross paths. Yes. And uh, was there for four years, and then at Amic. Yep. For three or four years and then I was at Cambria for the most recent like eight years so eight years you were with them wow with Cambria yeah wow um so first uh first entry into the mortgage industry straight consumer direct like same way I started to give you a phone book and give you a computer and yeah sell 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 mortgages that, that's exactly it. there was no uh there was no leads back then it was just you know here you go here's some here's just a phone book pages, or, right start building relationships yeah, and that was, uh, it's crazy to think, you know, really, and the barrier of entry is still fairly low in this industry right now. Like, you got to do 20 hours of education. You have to take a test. But um, back then, there was nothing, right? I mean, literally, no. hey, do you want to sell mortgages? Like, well, what do you mean? Like, it was, amaz it was amazing to me that there was still no regulation on something that is the largest financial purchase that people make in their entire lives, and we were just uh, winging it. We were. I mean, and, and probably thankful that there was no regulation at that time. Um, not that we couldn't have passed the test or done the things, but um, it's probably what allowed me to get into this industry and, and be here, you know, 20 years later. Same. Uh, yeah. It's funny because I don't think anyone ever aspired to like, hey, I, uh, I think when I get out of high school, I'm going to go to college and I'm going to be in more. I'm going to be a mortgage broker. Or I'm going to be in, um, an MLO. Nobody. No, nobody knows what a, a loan officer is or a mortgage broker at that point. They know what a real estate agent is, yes, right? Because they're yes. the face of, of the transaction. Yep. But you know, we're we're in the behind the scenes at the desk uh, doing the back end work. So hundred hundred percent are. So I didn't even know what it was until then. Cool part is, so Justin and I worked together at East Funding uh, in Eden Prairie. Yep. There was a lot of good people that we worked with, and I would say I made some really good relationships, even though I wasn't there for a very long time. But when I look back. We had Jay White, yep. right? Jay, Jay was White. our manager yes. for a while. Jay's a beast. Love that guy. Yep. He was so motivational even when, like, as a manager. He was just, he was good. Yep. You know, he really was. Brought the military background. He did, yeah. <laughs> you had uh, Fred Rogers, right? <clears throat> yep. Fred's with us still today. Um, who else did we have there? Oh, Jeremy Hill. I, he's not with us. Jeremy Hill, yeah. Yeah, Jay Hill. He's uh, he's a client and friend of mine. I still yep. talk with him. Okay, Kevin Knockreiner. Yes, Man, and Tony Knockreiner. Yes. Um, wow. Yeah, there was 
quite a few others. Uh, Ken Grazak was there. I don't know if he was there when yeah. you were there, but he was yep. there. I remember Ken. Um, Still talk yeah, with Ken every good now people. and then. That's, uh, it's kind of cool how to see things come full circle with that. I mean, that was the same, you know, I would say rat race that we kind of were running prior to where they did, they did leads, right? They were sending out mailers. It was 100% mailers, yes. Yeah. I mean, not that you didn't bring in some of your own business, but it, I, I and everybody else pretty much relied on the phone ringing. The phone ringing. Yeah, yes. I remember that. And yep. it was more of a, you know, the game of who could outwork the next person. Yes. Meaning if you were there till 8, 9 o'clock at night, and everybody left at four or five, there yep. was only two or three people that would stay late. So that's you're right. the ones that were scooping it up. And that's what I always remembered about you. Besides you making like a hundred plus thousand on one deal one time, which was pretty wild. Yeah, but I did set the company record uh, with uh, most fees on a transaction. <sighs> and uh, that would not happen in today's no, industry. It <laughs> the regulation. No, it not to mention it was probably a pay option <laughs> arm at that. But No, we, actually it was a no income, no, it was a Nina, no income, no asset jumbo loan. Just um, wild. Yeah. Just wild times. But, you know, the, the whole thing was like, to me, you have to get your education and the education to get in this industry is not your education. The education comes from like, to me, I've always viewed it. If you went to be an attorney, you're going to spend eight years in school, probably two more years doing some sort of, uh, you know, post master's degree, and then you start learning. And you're going to have a base salary when you get in a job as an attorney, maybe 150000 130000 a year. But you got to build a book of business. Sure. And then you finally get to start making money. Where for us, you know, as a mortgage loan originator, the first couple of years for the majority of people are getting your education, like learning not only how to sell, like in being a good salesman, which is really just being authentic and being honest, um, but it takes a while because at first you're nervous. Like sure. I remember my first loan that I closed, I was freaking nervous, right? Yeah. Like, am I doing this right? I remember Fred was helping me. I put an FDR fee on the <laughs> on the HUD one <laughs> settlement statement. I remember the client asked, he's like, "What? what's an FDR fee? Oh, I think it's like federal deposit reserve or I'm like, that was Fred's initials. Yeah. Uh, like, no, that was just me paying that guy to help train me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you just, you just won it back. You, you wing won, it. Right. Yeah. It's like, and that's the, that's what you got to do. I think in this profession, when you start is you're not going to know everything and every transaction is a little bit different. So even if you don't have the answers, you got to just, you got to dance. You got to win. I you got to dance. And we'll get to the end, right? We'll get it. Like, yeah. uh, you know, to me, that's been one of the, like, even today, I mean, there's answers that we don't know. And you and I have been divulged in mortgages for two decades, Yep. right? It, but there's 90,000 guideline changes every 90 days. You yep. know, it's like, it's damn near impossible to know everything. What you start to understand as a good originator is being confident that you can find the answer is better than being confident that you know the answer. Sure. Because it changes so often anyways, to me, like, yeah, I would rather give you the right answer than the right now answer. Yep. Um, so yeah, good, good chat. And that's kind of when like, you know, you've like, when you can take a file and just look at it and know that it's going to work. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Like some people overthink the process too much and they end up getting in their own way when you can just you really dominate when you can just take and say, yep, I'll get this done and you move forward right away. hundred percent. We'll hear about somebody that over analyzes. That's uh, they call them cheese wheel upstairs. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Josh little with five <laughs> spreadsheets open yeah. at all time. Love the guy. So uh, it's kind of our culture yeah. here. We have a little fun and uh, he's been, he's been a good guy, but let's, you know, Cambria, you were there eight years, right? Yep. Long time, really good company, right? I mean, yeah. they make some amazing countertops. They do. They um, do. Guy was an amazing Has dairy farmer yep. and has an amazing house <laughs> on Lake Minnetonka. Um, you did really well there, though, right? I mean, during the it's not like you know, to me, it wasn't you've never been in a position where you've struggled, even when you came to join us. It wasn't like, hey, I'm not closing any business, and to me, like, that's what I like with the people that we attract. I don't want somebody that is. Uh, how do I say this? They're, they're unhappy. It's more about looking at opportunity, right? Yep. Cambria for your eight years there. Um, what were some of the things you loved? Well, I, I liked the people that I worked with. You know, it was a small company. There was only 30 to 30 originators, you know, probably 45 people when 
um, all said and done with operations. So the, 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 everybody was close, like a family. Yep. And, uh, you know, helped each other. Um, so it was it was good in that aspect. I, I really enjoyed working there yeah. with the people I did. But good culture. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, we've had some amazing people that have come from there that uh, I can see why that have added to our culture. Yeah. You know, Mary's one of them. I mean, she's sure. uh, just an awesome person, always wanting to help people. Uh, you know, I like that. So um, after Cambria, then you went to. I Lone did go to. That's where I forgot to say. I did go to Lone Depot for a year and a half yes. before I came here to you. Yeah. Yes. So. Lone Depot. I was listening to, I think we have a mutual friend who sent me a recording of one of their all calls yes. that they had. And I forget the guy's <laughs> name, Tony, uh, one of the chairmen. He was like, you know, I know UWM has some, like th they're better at blah, 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 blah. That was actually Anthony, who is the largest yes. shareholder in yes, Lone Anthony. Depot, who was not. I was calling know. him Tony. Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's Anthony. Anthony, Anthony Shea, yeah. Anthony Shea was there. Yeah. And I got that so, recording. Yep. And I was like, wow. Like, to me, that's just, uh, we're always competing. I mean, regardless, like, we don't compete internally, but yeah. we're competing even with other brokers in our own market, right? It's sure. just uh, not very often. Uh, but at the same time, I was kind of shocked. But I was kind of shocked by that, especially as a publicly traded company that uh, they would say that. But, you know, what was one of the things, you know, tell me what drew you to looking at the broker channel? Uh, there was two main things, you know, the broker channel, what drew me here was obviously being able to offer the client a competitive rate. And I had lost out on a few deals recently where I, you know, if I was here, I wouldn't have lost those deals. So yep. that's just basically me throwing money out the window. There's yep. no reason to do that. Um, Correct. if I have a real estate agent that's bringing me a client, I need to be able to provide for that client under any circumstance. Otherwise I might lose that relationship down the road. So, I mean, that was... One of the reasons, the main reason is, you know, like you had mentioned before, you know, I didn't need to make a move, right? I was doing fine where I was at, yep. but I also felt like I was missing something. And what yep. I was missing is that culture. And I, you know, had been watching the stuff that you guys are doing and felt like this is probably the right fit for me moving forward. Yep. And, and since I've been here, it's kind of, it's, it's backed itself up. So yeah, it's been, it's been awesome. <laughs> I got to say, cause uh, Justin, he is on, he's in our office. So it is a fun culture, right? I mean, Definitely. we really, yes, we work hard, but I will tell you, you know, when I come in and I see somebody else on the phone working, I'm, I'm, I'm driven by that. Like su success breeds success. And 100%. when we see people that are making good decisions with their business and working hard, that is what motivates me. Right. Yep. And I love, I love, I love it. I'm really glad that you've added to the culture here. Just having you here hustling, working, um, cause you are, you're putting in the work. It's not, I don't care what company you work for. The only way you're going to be successful is if you bet on yourself and work. Bet and, on yourself and keep planting those seeds. And, and you're doing it, yeah, right? I mean, you definitely. took a pretty big leap because I can tell you that for a lot of retail originators, they make it tough. They make it tough for you to leave because they try to handicap you in a way that, well, I don't know how to do disclosures. I yep. don't know. I've heard I can't do closing. There's all of these processes that they segment to where I don't think you had to do on your side, right? I mean, when you were at... Oh, no, uh, it's definitely been a different... It's been eye-opening a little bit. Yeah. You know, it, I'm not going to say that it's been the easiest transition because it's a transition. It but is. It, it, I'm betting on myself, and the more I learn and the more I can do, it's just going to make me that much better. Yep. But there is, it's one routine over there to retail, right? They have their internal stuff. A lot of the stuff that we have to do, they might do for you that yes. you don't notice, yep. right? But, but again, in the end, who's paying for that, you know? It's kind I of am. It. It's hands. It's like hungry, <laughs> hungry hippo. There's yeah. only so many balls in the middle. <laughs> and if you got four hands grabbing at it, exactly, you might only get 25% of what was there. As to where us, like, you know, and I'll say us, but us as brokers, especially under our model, there's some brokers that run different models, but our model is really designed to be lean, right? Sure. We want to be lean as a company so that we make sure our value proposition isn't fake. I see so many fake value propositions in this business that to me, it's like, we are in the business of selling money. Mm -hmm. And if we sell it cheaper, we close faster and we pay more. What is there? What, what am I missing? Like to this day, I'll take recruiting calls and like, well, help, help me understand. Is there something I can offer my clients that's going to be better for them or my team that's going to put more money in their pocket? Yep. 
And it's always like when I share my model, they're like, well, yeah, sorry. Because, I mean, I'll take the call. I always want to know. I think education is key in any industry. I always want to know what's out there, what's attracting people, what is the new, the new thing. And the reality of it is I don't think it's possible. I think when you look at the basic economics of this industry of selling money, what is the main goal? I'm not helping you grow your business. I mean, no. I'm really not. No. I, I would love to say, well, you know, and I've been sold before, like when we worked at Ace, they helped me grow my business because sure. they're yeah. paying money to have mailers to make yeah. my phone ring. Exactly. I'm not paying money to make your phone you're, ring. You're not paying me to grow my business, but what I'm getting out of the culture and the things around and hearing you on the phone every day and hearing Andy and, you know, everybody else around, that's what's helping me push me to be better. And that's Part what's going to yep. make me grow. It's a choice that you, you're making, though, right? Exactly. I mean, that's, yep. uh, to me, the strongest value proposition is one that's not gimmicky, yep. right? And, and that's what, like, even I was, uh, had an employee at Lone Depot that worked underneath me, and he moved on from Lone Depot to a different company. And he actually called me yesterday and was, like, talking about rates. And going back to what we just talked about, you know, making it look good is that they had put caps on it. Mm-hmm to make the rates look good. Well, then you come and find out at the end, you're not making nearly as much. You thought the rate was better. Yeah. Um, so there's not always that transparency. No. It, it's, there is no shiny mortgage company or, or thing that anybody can do to make you more money. In the end, you have to hustle. I mean, it, it, so it, you're just hiding one thing to show another. Even if you have a builder relationship and you have a, you know, you're their preferred lender with the builder. You look at, like some of those relationships, they're getting paid peanuts because uh, to be an originator, you're not, you're not an independent mortgage professional. And to me, I like the fact that when I look at my checking account, that's a direct reflection on my efforts, right? Yep. I know if I'm working hard and I'm kind of excited because I don't know if your paychecks have hit yet, but like even, um, and I don't know your wife personally, but one of the things that you mentioned to me when you come over that really like stuck with me is, my wife's nervous about this, right? Sure. And it is for a lot of people that make this change because there is not a safety net, right? Nope. If you don't close anything, you are not getting paid. Exactly. If you are not getting paid, you're not going to have a good house, you know, a good home life, especially for us that have been in this industry long enough to provide for our families, that that's the agreement we've made with our spouse. Like that's been my agreement with my spouse. Exactly. I need help taking care of the house, our family, you know, making sure my mindset's right to, and it takes an amazing supporting wife to be able to keep us grounded enough to where we can come in and work. Like I need to be able to produce to make sure that when those paychecks hit, if your paychecks hit yet, we've had one, we're waiting okay. for the next one. I okay. Mean, I know you got a few of them coming. We got, we got some more coming down the road here pretty quick, which, which is, which is You've nice. been here, what, 30 days? 30 days. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's, uh, you know, it's time. I'm ready to see you planted some seeds. Yep. Some people it takes longer, but uh, you, that's not you. You've always been a leader in this industry, even, you know, man, how long ago was Ace? 15, 17 years ago? 16 I think we worked together and it was either 04 or 05. 04 05? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was a long time ago. So and we were killing it then. Yeah, you know? no, it was, yeah. You were doing much better than I was at that point because I was still, I went from, um, I forget where I went after that. Um, but it was still like, to me, the call center aspect was fun because it taught me a lot, yep. but it felt like a job, you know, as to where once I made that switch of becoming a relationship based recruiter, it felt like a career at yeah, that point. Definitely. It's like, if I'm a financial advisor and I have a portfolio I'm managing, my job is to manage that portfolio. Yep. When you become a purchase based originator, my job is to manage those relationships. Yep. Like, what am I doing to provide value? Do the people that work with me or call me, do they know how much I care about making them look good and, and protecting that client from having a bad experience, doing such a good job that we earn two referrals on every transaction? That's a lot easier to me than, um, you know, how we used to have no, to do it. No, but I think it's a good way to cut your teeth in the business because you're almost at that point an order taker and people are coming to you and you can learn the industry yes. and, and, and gain knowledge that way. Yep. Where when you get to where we're at now, we have to have that knowledge in order to keep these relationships going, right? You really do. So, um, and it's not to discourage anybody new from, you know, just jumping 
with both feet in the water, as long as you have a good mentor that's, yeah. you know, I there mean, to we've help seen you. It. We had Tony Zerwaz yesterday. I did yes. a call with him. I mean, guy's brand new to the industry and he's at 42 closings for the yep. year so far. But one thing, one thing I see about Tony, you know, without, I've met him once, but I can just see from, you know, the dialogue that I see on Edge Connect and, and other things is he's out there, not afraid to ask questions, No, you know, and, and one of the leaders on there actually after 18 months with answering questions, you know, he's, 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 he's aggressive. He's got a lot of answers. Yes. He's definitely. aggressive. And what it is for him is he understands who his boss is mm -hmm. and that boss is the mirror. Yep. When you 100%. look in the mirror and if you are not liking the way things are going, you are in charge of it. Even 100%. if it's from a lender perspective, like if you have a lender that isn't upholding the reputation that you want to have, fire them. Yep. Like to me, I don't care who we use here. Like it's, I've tried to give everybody all of the resources in the world, but I need them to be resourceful. We have the ability to where, as you know, being here 30 days, lenders are probably calling you nonstop. You took a chance with uh, not even one of our number one lenders with Windsor. Windsor, yeah. yeah. And I, as I said, hey, he's got a file that needs to move quick. We were trying yeah. for a down payment assistance. It went wonky. You reached out. They are competing for our business. They are 100%. And, in it, and it shows. I mean, we had I've, my second clear to close with Windsor as well. And my third will be with them here coming up shortly. Um, and, and it shows, you know, when things do go a little sideways or not what you think it is, they're there for you to help. Yeah, they gain. need to. Yes, it's a relationship. Just like if I, you know, if I do a shitty job for one of my agents, guess what happens? I lose a lifelong business. It's not you know one transaction. And a lot of the banks that we partner with, and I'll say in, in, in incredible about Windsor is that's what they understand too. They need to perform well on every transaction. Doesn't mean they need to close every transaction. Yep. It means there needs to be communication and collaboration to say, hey, this is what we have. Here's why it works. Here's why it doesn't work. To be able to give you the education that you need to communicate with your client. Hey, you know, luckily there hasn't been any need to talk about anything else other than the closings you have. Yeah. But this industry, there's always stuff that happens, right? Not everything no, there is. No, there is. There is 100%. But there's also that whole mirror effect where I think anytime anything happens, you know, whether you're not closing loans, like you said, or that there are issues, you can look in the mirror and look at what, what did I do and did I do a good enough job, yeah. you know? Um, because it's easy to sit at your desk and scroll through TikToks and, and waste the time and be pissed that you're not closing anything. Yeah. But in the end, whose fault was that? Yeah, you Yours. gotta, you gotta, <laughs> you, you know, know I, I adopted that from Ishbia, but the thumb pointer mentality, right? That's one yeah. of the things that is part of their culture. And um, even with like parenting, I think like I've tried to instill that in my daughter, like instead of being angry that, you know, oh, this teacher did this, like, let's look at what you did. What, what role did you have in things? And I think healthy, well-balanced people, especially successful people, it's a common trait. Sure. I'm not blaming anyone for anything else. I, I'm looking at it from my perspective. What can I do better? And it's, uh, to me, that's, that's a driving force that I see with successful people and I see with you. There yeah, you can't been. control what others do, right? So why point fingers at them and, and just what can you do and learn from it and move on and, yeah. be, and be a better person? So let's talk about, um, I think, you know, you said you graduated from Champlin. You got yeah. in the industry at the same time. I'm 43. I think you're close to my age. 44. 44. You know, so we probably have 21 years left of wanting, you know, like to me, I like what I do. So I want to work for at least another 22 years. Sure. What does the next 20 years look like for you in this industry? Uh, I think the next 20 years is going to be in the broker industry, developing more relationships that are strong relationships that I can count on moving forward for the next 20 years. Um, I did get out of originating for about three years and went in just into management. So I've had to start to rebuild. When was that? So in 2018, when I was at Cambria, okay. I stopped originating and then uh, was vice president of sales. Okay. So at that point, I let my relationships oh. go. So now looking back, realize that that's not always a smart choice. You know, not that I don't, I have no regrets with taking that position, yep. but it's the, once you let go of your, 
relationships, that's what feeds you. Yeah, you lose your value proposition yes. as a, you know, I mean, I'll tell you for me, I've been worried about that for myself because as we've grown, I've now taken on a new position with the company that I'm not a, I still find myself like yeah. scared sometimes sure. because of it, just to be But one thing that when I did do that, that I always knew that I could do is get relationships back because yes. that's just, I've been doing this long enough. It's who I am. It's what I know. It's the people I know. Yep. And it doesn't come overnight though. It, you have to grow it. No. And I'm here a year and a half later and I'm still growing it back to even what it was back then. Yep. So, um, there are good months, there are bad months, but I, the next 20 years, I want to continue to see that grow and, you know, and maybe grow a small team again and, you know, enjoy the time with my family. Yeah. What I would love to do, and this is something that I'm like working on is some sort of a succession, succession plan for originators like yourself and me. Meaning, you know, when you get to the point, let's say we're 65 and we're part of the old fogey group at that point. Sorry yep. for any of my 65 year olds that still are <laughs> grinding it out. Yeah. But to be able to have like we've set up our client care team yes. to be able to help. If we if you have your website running, you have your system somewhat automated. Now, truth be told, 20 years from now, this industry might look completely yes. different. Yes. So I don't know. But to me, a good succession plan for even as I get older uh, with my own clients, it's like it would be great to have a company that supports that to where you're still capturing revenue from the seeds you planted. Like right now, you're still in planting mode, right? You've oh, had to rebuild yeah. a year and a half ago. It's bearing some fruit, but you're you're just getting started still on rebuilding. Yep. I'm going to try for us to have to look at what would a succession plan be? Those are the things like for me, now that I have time to think about those and work on those instead of just originating nonstop, because originating is a stressful job. I don't care what anybody says. Like, it is. Man, is it wicked stressful. It is. Um, and you're always on call. And it doesn't shut off when you go home. No. You know, if it's Friday night and you got a closing on Monday and you had a condition that was supposed to be reviewed because the borrower didn't get it in time, you're going to tell your agent, well, the borrower didn't get it to me in time? Yep. That's you tell your borrower that cancel your moving truck and all the people that are taking time off from yep. their jobs to help you move. Yeah, Got to take difficult. accountability in yeah. this industry. So um, circle back a little. You talked about rebuilding your business in the last year and a half. And I've used this analogy often, but I like it. When you talk about you knew that you always could, I, I relate this to playing poker. And to me, if you watch the World Series of Poker, everybody plays with the same 52 cards. Yep. Yet, there's always like the same group of people at the final table. Sure. There are always players in this industry that are going to be at the final table. And yep. like a lot of people will say, well, you know, and this is my question to you. What separates you um, from others in this industry? You know, that's a good question. Sometimes I ask myself that question, just looking at others and why, you know, why am I more successful than him or why is he more successful than me? And, and I think it all comes down to the effort that you put into your craft day in and day out. Um, are you, you know, everybody can get the closings done on time, you know, and, and have that, but what are you doing to build relationships? And one of my strong suits is, is getting difficult loans to the table. Yep. And I think that goes back to where we came from in that call center culture where we dealt with a lot of lower credit score people. You know, it wasn't always 780s and, and uh, countrywide fast and easy. Oh, yes. <laughs> one touch. I yes. used to love the countrywide um, one touch. Drop off the file at nine, it's clear to close by three. Yes. But, but that's, that's, I build a lot of my relationships with learn, meeting the real estate agents on the other side of the transaction that couldn't get done somewhere else or that, you know, I'm reaching out and just explaining the process to them and where we're at. And it's really gaining their trust yeah. in the end. And that, and that's where I think a lot of people fail. They just, you know, closing alone is one thing, but keeping the communication lines open and, and doing some of the other dirty things not i don't want to use that word yeah dirty, i know what you mean but like just, going through a file to the point to where it's uh you know if they had cash to pot like the stuff that you get with low you know tough borrowers uh, yep. i say it other than that um my perception i think the reason why you know you have always been a leader in this industry is the way that you communicate and your confidence 
There, you're not afraid to enter a relationship and worrying you're going to let somebody down because you put 100% into it. Yep. And I think people see that, right? To me, when I come in and I'm watching you work on things in the way that you're there's not excuses made. It's accountability, which in an industry, and I've joked with people before, like, hey, come here. The vault is not here. Like, I don't make a lending decision yep. uh, from the fact of whether you're approved or not. My job is to prepare it cleanly and argue the facts, just like an attorney. Sure. You know, yep. attorneys all have the same license, yet there's some that make, you know, $6,000 an hour and some that make 80. What's the difference? It's the ability to be able to have constructive conversations. And I've, I've seen you have these, right? Yep. Um, so I like the question. I liked your perspective. You know, I, agree, I, really with that. Think, I agree with that. I really I agree think it's the, the confidence and yes. knowing how to communicate yep. when there's issues. Because it's very easy to communicate when things are going well. Yep. The differentiator between most partnerships, even marriage, even friendships, what happens when things are going bad? You know, how do you show up when things are going bad? Do you fly off the handle? Do you blame others? That's a very common trait. Sure. And it's a common trait in this industry. Yep. And you watch, why is that person not closing business? It's because they don't have that skill. And it is a skill. Yep. And I do think we've learned it from dealing with it so many times mm -hmm. to like, hey, you know, I care enough to where it bothers me. If I don't close on a client's transaction, I physically sometimes will feel ill. Sure. No, I can't I definitely agree with that, but and I'm going to communicate it mm -hmm. and I'm going to make sure that, Hey, I'm, I'll, I'll be held accountable. I tried everything that I could. I think if you'll talk to, you know, 10 real estate agents or even a hundred, one of the most common things they say that they hate is when they don't find out things happen until the last minute. Yeah. And it's like, why would you just tell me this now? There's yeah. no way that something just comes up the day before closing. Yeah. And that's how you lose a relationship right away. Easily. And, yeah. and in my managing experience, I've noticed, and that's one thing I've learned more and more, is that communication is key to everything. Swallow the frog, man. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not going to go away. <laughs> it's not. It's not. I mean, I don't know. And I catch even, you know, not to tout myself as some great originator, I catch myself doing it sometimes. Yep. Like, I know for a fact what the outcome is going to be. But I don't want to believe it, so I keep trying. Yep. And all I'm doing is delaying the pain, you know, yep. instead of letting somebody know right away and making sure that, uh, you know, I'm treating with the respect I would want to be treated. But with. how many times when you communicate right away, do you end up getting the answer and feeling better that much sooner? Because there's always a solution to the problem. It's even not even with a real estate agent, with a borrower. Let's say somebody fills out an application online and you, your perception right away is this doesn't work. But then you pick up that phone, you have that conversation, you ask the right questions. And now there's all of a sudden $3,000 more in income that because they're not educated on what needs exactly. to go on this or yeah. not. And it's, it's, talk the things out hundred percent. It's really just uh, I mean, with all things in life, it's really about like, how good of a partner are you? Like how good of a partner are you to your kids? How good of a partner are you to your wife? How good of a partner are you to your agents and your community? True. It has to be authentic, right? Yep. And communication. If you're not great at it, work at it. You can be better at it. Like there are, um, I don't know, to, to being accountable is something that I think people can work on and get better and get themselves to the final, you know, to the final I can table. attest to that. I, I, I'm continuing to get better and better. Same. I think we all are, right? 100%, I mean, brother. My wife might not agree, but. Uh, likewise, <laughs> but, you know, that's just, yeah. uh, that's how it goes. So yeah. um, let's finish with this question. If you're a retail originator and you've only been here 30 days, so, you know, yep. to me, um, I, don't, I don't want it to be fake, right? I want to sure. have a real perception. Um, if you were talking to a retail originator that's considering is, should I be doing this or should, or should I not? What advice would you have for them? I would tell them to bet on themselves. And, and I think that laying it out on paper a little bit for them and showing them, my advice would be is to bet on yourself and go for it because what you're leaving behind and what you're afraid of is, is, is a myth in my opinion. Um, because you're selling X rate and you're getting paid a lot less yeah. where if you sell the same rate over here, you're getting paid twice, if not more than that yep. in some instances. And, and it takes care of, you know, a lot of people are afraid of costs and things of that nature, but 
in the end, you're paying for it regardless because yep. it's less money out of your pocket. 100%. So I would just tell people to go for it. You're in control of everything at that point. You, you can charge what you want. You can you know, go out and, and build more relationships by doing that. I think that in the end, and that's why I made the move, is, is if you're going to bet on yourself, there's no better place to do it than the broker world. Tip. Couldn't agree more. And truthfully, there's no better place than Hedge because you don't have to worry about all the other stuff of what it takes to run a business, right? Correct. From uh, accounting, call reports, attorneys, audits. Uh, I hear want, a lot of people say, why don't you just open your own? Because yeah. I don't want to deal with yeah. that. I mean, Look at it as a price per file of what it costs to yeah. run a brokerage. Yeah. It's cheaper to operate under our umbrella. And it that's is. kind of why, like today, I have a call with uh, a fairly successful separate broker owner. It's like, man, this is killing me. Like, mm -hmm. I can't focus on anything else other than running the business. Fortunate for me, I've had amazing partners that don't, yep. don't originate. So <laughs> the whole time they've been on the back scenes, working on the accounting, working on the call reports, I've been able to have, like, a job that I love. I get to originate. Yep. And I get to help people. And, and I have if to, you had to do all that, you wouldn't have the numbers you have. Zero today. chance. Zero yep. chance. And I'd have less hair than I have right now. <laughs> so... Yeah. Um, with that, thank you. I can't tell you how uh, thankful I am to have you part of the family. Um, I'm glad to be how, here, definitely. How proud I am for you for betting on yourself, right? I think, uh, like, I'm not a forceful salesman just with my clients or with LOs. You and I have been talking for years. Yeah, I mean, I, I've ghosted you a few times. Yes, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it was, uh, but it come down to it to where, like, for me, I want a relationship goes both ways, yep, right? Definitely. And I don't want to ever sell somebody on a relationship. I want it to be authentic. So sure. um, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being part of our family and adding to the culture. And for anybody listening, if you're interested, check us out. Thursday, we have our anonymous webinar. Would love to see you um, dive in a little, see what it is, what is different about Edge? Why are we growing at a pace faster than any other company? Why are we giving opportunities that put you in the driver's seat to have control of your business? With that, we wish you a great day.